Hey guys, Ray from Lovey RV and Boat. So I'm back with another video about this SRNE system that I'm going to be installing in the boat this spring. It's kind of, as you see, pictured here, it's an all-in-one system. They're going to have all the components to make an off-grid system. And I did one video on it already. I'll link back to that if you missed it. It was sort of just an introduction. A lot of these products aren't even out to market yet. It's kind of a sneak peek. Anyway, these are the DC to DC chargers. Um, this one I've been using for a while now in my RV and it's been working really well. I use it for powering my batteries in my RV off the alternator. I can charge with the alternator on the truck or it all has a, also has a solar controller inside and PPT controller and it's 50 amp. So it's kind of the heart of the system. This little one I haven't seen up to market before and it's a 30 amp DC to the DC charger. So it does much the same as this, although it does have a different feature. It has kind of a, a converter in it. Um, and also it has isolation between the input side and the output side. So on the lugs here, on the input plus and minus, they're completely isolated from the output plus and minus. On this one, they share, let's pop that off. All these share a common negative uh, grounding, so anything is, is kind of linked together, which is how most RVs, they use the frame for grounding and everything is kind of tied together. But there may be some instances where you want things separate. Um, one thing is if you're running sensitive equipment, they say like electronics, sometimes you might want the output to be regulated at a steady voltage and also be isolated from the other system that may be putting out interference or noise, that type of deal. Anyway, in this video, we're going to go in and look at this. It has a built-in Bluetooth, so it has its own app. And I'm going to test it as a charger and as a converter. So, let's get to it. First, let's give you a good look at it physically. And it's just a little over six inches by maybe five inches by maybe three inches. So very compact. And you can see it's got some nice uh, terminals there that you screw on and they supply you with some of uh, the actual ring terminals to go on there. So that's nice little flap for protection. You got three lights, charging, battery, and then there's a caution light in case something goes wrong. On the bottom here we have the remote on off. See it's shorted right now, but you could put a switch in line there to turn it on and off physically. It can be turned on and off in the app. And you've got TTL and RS-485 CAN bus. So I guess this can connect to other equipment or I think they're coming out with their own kind of gateway that's gonna tie all their equipment together on an interface. Um, or maybe you could get some software and plug it into a laptop. On the back we have a pretty decent sized uh, finned heat sink. I like these because there's no fans, so they're dead quiet. I did see in here it says waterproof, but uh, I'm not sure if these would actually be waterproof, but it looks like it could handle some moisture. Give you a quick look at the app here. You can see on the front screen you got a battery. It says it's in boost mode. So right now it's set to charger mode. It has an input voltage 12 point or 13.2 volts and the output would be 14.5. Right now there's nothing hooked up to it. That's why it's showing 14.5. No current or power, but once it's set up, it, it will uh, show that. Show you that in a minute when I actually do a, a real-world test. Device temp. So this is kind of your real-time screen. Then there's a history screen here showing what's happened in, in prior charges, that sort of thing. Um, basic info. We've got the model number, serial number, software version. You can update the firmware on this screen. And then we've got a gear icon. That's where you set things up. And you can switch it on and off from the, the app here. 
We're in charging function. This is where you can set up your battery settings. System voltage, 12. Um, I, think, I think you might be able to do 24. I'm not sure. Um, battery type. Oops. Right now it's set for lithium, but we have user defined, vented lead acid, lead acid, sealed, or gel. Nominal capacity of the battery bank. Maximum charge amps. This is a 30 amp charger, but you could set it lower if you wanted. Boost charge voltage set for 14.4. Boost charge recovery voltage. Under voltage warning voltage. Full cutoff delay in minutes. Full cutoff current. Start charge above voltage. Stop charge above voltage. So I guess you could set it up so that it, it won't overcharge a battery. But the uh, interesting thing is there's lots of DC to DC charges, but this is kind of a two-in-one. If you go here, you can go electric source. And now it just becomes an output. So you put in, you put in um, an alternator or battery on one side, and then it outputs a fixed amount, and it regulates that, and it isolates it. So in this scenario, you would have your, your battery system, say in your RV or boat, but say you were running some sensitive electronics and you wanted it isolated from the rest of the system, you would put this in between and then you would set the voltage to what you would like, say 12.6 or whatever, and then it would put out that as a regulated voltage. So I'm gonna do a test of that function as well using one of my air compressors. Just wanted to give you a little overview of the app. And it's only version 1.01. .01. They're constantly improving things. This is, like I say, this is just coming out. Anyway, let's go do some real world tests here. So let's do a test of power mode. So it's acting as a DC to DC converter with a fixed regulated output, so not a charger. Got a battery here putting out 13.2 volts. I've gone into the app and set it for 12.6 volts. My meter is showing 12.66 coming out. And I've hooked up a uh, air compressor here and I can vary how much amperage it draws just by plugging my finger on the, the air nozzle. So it'll be a good test to see how well it regulates that voltage. So we'll just turn it on. 12.65. Now I'm gonna, and let's see what it's putting out right now. 7 amps, 89 watts. Now I'm going to plug it. It's up around 17 amps. So the voltage was rock solid. And that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to regulate the voltage. And also, it's uh, ground and positive are completely isolated from each other. So if we had a lot of interference in this circuit, you know, with chargers and things going on, the output of this would be stable. And uh, so it's very good for running sensitive equipment. At least that's the, the theory behind it. Next, let's test it as an actual charger. So here's a test charging situation. I've got a lithium battery here as the input to the charger. And on the output of the charger, I have another lithium battery. Let's see what's going on. It should be putting out 30 amps, showing 14.3 volts on the output. I have a meter here. I can check. Let's check the output current. 29.56. And we can check the input current here. 38.7 so I'm taking the energy out of this battery through the DC to DC charger and putting it into that battery other than a battery here I could have like say an alternator running in my truck and I could have the my truck input into here and it would be taking the energy out of my truck alternator battery and putting it into a coach or house battery so just another way to hook that up. And again, with this one, it's isolated. 
And I could utilize this here. I could wire in an on off switch here. As you can see, it's charging. I'll pull that out and it turns off. Put it back in, like throwing the switch. And we should turn back on. Okay, it didn't start up right away because I had to go in and adjust a setting called uh, start above voltage was too high for this battery so I had to bring it down to 13 volts and it would start properly. So let's try that again. Unplug that. At zero. Plug it back in. It should start up this time. There we go. There's also in the app a way to turn it off and on as well. Off. There we go. And then there's an on on the app as well. There we go. Pretty cool. Okay, so that's a look at the little isolated DC to DC charger. Um, like I say, if you missed my uh, first video, I'll link back to it here. I got a blog post going where I'm going to start linking all the videos of the different components as I kind of take a more of a deep dive in each of them, getting ready for the installation coming this spring. Um, right now, they don't have a price list out, and most of this equipment isn't ready for sale yet. They're kind of like getting me to do some installations and stuff like that and kind of introduce it to people and probably work out some bugs for them. Um, here's the, the photo I had from them. And right here is what we just looked at, this isolated DC to DC charger. And you can see on this particular diagram, it's coming off the main battery bank through the DC distribution into it. And then the output, you can see we have stereo and looks like a camera stuff, so like sensitive equipment. So that's what it's been utilized in this particular system for. And if you want to know about the other DC to DC charger, I'll link to that. This is the one I've been using in my rig for about a year and a half now. I really like it. Anyway, that's it for now. Any questions, I'll try to answer them. I'm kind of in contact with them, been asking them questions myself about certain things. So it'll be an ongoing process. Till next time, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. Cheers, everyone.